Professor Li, thank you so much for your time to join our interview. You know, being a political advisor is nothing new for you, but this is like the first time that you tackle something about the carbon emissions reduction. So could you tell us more about that and why did you focus on carbon this time? Well, I think there's no better topic than the, uh, uh, than the application of economic principles to apply to uh, this year is the carbon emission. Uh, because in the past one year, we've seen that uh, many different regions in China and different industries have come up with their own individual uh, targets of carbon reduction, which is disastrous because carbon reduction should be a nationwide coordinated effort. Rather than that, individual companies are trying to reduce their carbon, oftentimes at an extremely high cost. For example, in, towards the end of last, towards the second half of last year, we've seen skyrocketing a price of uh, coal and uh, a shortage of coal for fire-powered electrical power generation plants, and therefore causing extreme uh, and unnecessary interruption to the economy. So therefore, my proposal is that China should aim to create a uniform market of carbon emission. Some regions which have higher cost of carbon reduction than the carbon price implied by the uniform market should not reduce carbon, whereas regions which have lower costs than uh, the uniform market carbon price should step up their efforts to reduce carbon emission. So that's a very simple principle. A lot of developed countries have met difficulties when they try to you know, put a price on the carbon. So why do you think China, as a developing country, is able to make this happen? Well, uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful question. I think in developed countries, for example, in the US, economists have all for long come to the conclusion that a carbon tax is perhaps the best way to reduce carbon emission because a carbon tax would allow everybody to be aware of the cost of carbon emission. However, in developed countries, for example, in the US, because of political factors, political factors, the voters, Many voters are against this, whereas in China, we have a better e political system in terms of uh, implementing issues of carbon reduction. So in our political system, decisions can be made with the holistic interest of the society uh, being into taking account. So China really, really lead uh, the world's uh, efforts in carbon reduction by imposing, by implementing our carbon tax, uh, benefiting from China's uh, unique political system. China set up a national emissions trading system last year. From your perspective, what is the difference between the carbon tax and the carbon market? Well, uh, from a pure, pure economic and a theoretical academic perspective, a carbon emission trading and a carbon tax uh, are equivalent because through the trading of the rights, you also generate a price of carbon emission, which would be equivalent to the price uh, created by imposing a carbon tax at the source of carbon production. Okay. Uh, however, in reality, the idea of carbon emission rights trade actually uh, often cannot be properly implemented. Why? Because, uh, first of all, not enough number of parties are able to participate. So therefore, what do we call is a thin market, T-H-I-N, a thin market of trading. We have a thin market of trading. The price of carbon emission uh, actually can be volatile, okay? It changes from day to day. And also on top of that, uh, financial considerations, for example, uh, the amount of money uh, in the marketplace, okay, which goes into uh, various issues such as monetary policy or even uh, military conflict far away from China it would have its impact on the carbon emission trade. So therefore, in the end, you have a very volatile, very volatile carbon price. Overall, I think the carbon tax is much better, much more pragmatic, a much easier uh, the policy than the trade of carbon emission rights. Uh, like, like you mentioned before, like a couple of months ago, China has ex just experienced a nationwide power shortage. And I think you have already made it very clear that you think the carbon tax can play a role to prevent uh, this kind of thing from happening again. But how? Well, 
uh, by implementing our carbon tax, then gradually the whole society, the whole society in China uh, will know not only the current price of carbon, but also they will know the future price of carbon because the government may announce a timetable of gradually ri raising the carbon tax, okay? When the government gradually uh, raises the carbon tax, the carbon price will gradually increase, and that will actually lead, will guide, will facilitate today's investment in green power generation. For example, the solar panels and uh, windmills. So the idea of a carbon tax actually helps today's investments, which is not only important for the future carbon reduction, but it's also important in generating investment today for stabilizing the economy today.